Hey everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. It's Terry, your host, coming to you from, uh, what's the name of this town? Uh, I don't know. It's just a little bit south of uh, Chehalis, I think. Um, yeah, so today, and, and this video may load up a little bit late because I got one loading now, but for some reason, I haven't been in any kind of like decent, um, you know, area with any bandwidth lately. Um, so I made stops two and three, or actually one and two, um, this morning up in Jet City metro area. By the way, Jet City woman by Queensryche. It's like my favorite song that has jet engine noise in it. Um, my second, of course, would be back in the USSR off the White Album by the Beatles. And I don't know, there might be a couple other songs that have jet noises, but those are the two that come to mind. But, but Jet City Woman is by far my favorite. Um, brilliant band, actually. Uh, Queensryche, that is. So, um, today is June 6th, 2023. It is the 79th anniversary of, if my math's right, 79th anniversary of the invasion of Normandy by Allied forces. Um, so, U.S. and British forces, also probably some Canadian thrown in there. Um, five beachheads. Um, the most famous probably is Omaha Beach. That was uh, elements of the first U.S. Army. Um, not the U.S. Army, the first army under the command of Omar Bradley. Um, and that was, that was the U.S. Army 5th Corps on Omaha Beach. There was also uh, Utah Beach was the other beach that the Americans um, made a beachhead on and then the British under Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery made a beachhead on three beaches um, they were named Gold, Juno and Sword um, but by far I think you know the, the, the beach with the most carnage was probably Omaha Beach um, 40 over 4400 Allied casualty or Allied kill on June 6th, uh, probably 10,000 plus casualties that day. Um, if uh, you know, I wasn't there, but I've met people um, that that were there. There was a barber um, at the Naval Academy was not, when I was on the staff there. His name is Mr. Degnan, and um, he was the guest of honor um, when the midshipmen. Um, did a viewing of Saving Private Ryan. Um, Mr. Degnan, Mr. Degnan was in a, um, I think he was in the 28th Infantry Division, which was, um, is now like a Pennsylvania National Guard. Um, but he was in, he actually was in the second wave, um, but on that day. So there was a first wave and then you know, a tenuous beachhead was established, and then there was a second wave. We also lost 185 Sherman tanks that day. Um, I guess Sherman tanks didn't float as well as they had hoped. Um, but anyway, certainly one of the most important days in the history of the United States, probably in the history of the world. Um, keep in mind, that was not the initial invasion of Europe. We had already in 1943 invaded, or earlier in 44 had made several um, landings in on the Italian peninsula. Um, most famous is probably Anzio, but also there was a huge battle called Monte Cassino for the area around Rome, and the, and the Germans, and maybe the Italians to some extent, but certainly the Germans um, put up a, a, a very, very stiff fight. Um, but the beachhead in Normandy, what it did is it gave us a huge tactical advantage, um, which would then, of course, be 
probably a huge strategic advantage too. And the reason is, is because from Normandy, from the English Channel into Germany, if you go through what are called the Low Countries, right, Holland and Belgium, there's nothing other than some rivers standing in your way. Whereas if we had tried to slug our way up the Italian peninsula and then into southern Germany, into Bavaria, we'd have had to go over a butt ton of mountains. So it was much quicker to get to the heart of the Third Reich by coming across northern France into the Low Countries. So that was probably the tactical reason for doing that. Um, <coughs> anyway, there's too much to talk about there. I just wanted to note that anniversary. So um, there is only about one time when I will snitch on a on a, a rat out a truck driver, you know, because I'm kind of like, hey, you do your own thing, buddy. If you get caught, that's on you. But I'm not going to be the reason you get caught, except for one instance. It really, 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 really pisses me off when truck drivers hit other trucks and take off and the, <coughs> and the reason I'm bringing that up is this today uh, my former trainee and my friend Paul um, his truck was effed up at a loves um, in Mississippi by a driver from Werner who backed over his fender with the dude's trailer right and then took off now here's the thing about that and this is kind of like weird, like karmic stuff. So um, the guy that, cause Paul was walking his dog. The guy that told Paul that his truck had been hit by a Werner driver was another Werner driver. But guess what? Paul also has a dash camera. And this is really, I think this is a better reason to have a dash camera than for accidents on the road. Because there's a lot of reconstruction that could be done, especially if it's very serious. Typically, a lot of times there'll be witnesses, but a hit and run at a truck stop is a great reason to have a dash cam. And way more likely to happen, right? Because if you're the victim, you have zero control over it, right? Unless you're sitting there and let the guy hit you and you don't blow your horn, right? But here's the interesting thing. In, in my trucking career, on two occasions, I have... Um, snitched on somebody who hit a truck and ran now I didn't call the cops on either of them but I did call either the victim company or the or the company of the person the perpetrator and I'll tell you the two examples and this is why this is kind of karmic because the first time it happened I was at night transportation I was a brand new driver by the way the, you may wonder why I still wear night t-shirts because they're still good um, they the t-shirts the I got at night are all over four years old and um, they've been in the t-shirt rotation a long time but they have they're just real they're good t-shirts uh, and you know candidly they're better than some of the basic t-shirts that prime sells um, and by the way night would just give these away the red ones and the black ones I got a bunch of those I also had a bunch of gray ones from night refrigerated that somebody just gave me but like you're place was a wash in t-shirts but they're they're good high quality t-shirts they're the seams are still good anyway I digress so I was a brand pretty brand new driver at at night and I had gotten into a uh, loves outside of Knoxville in Dandridge Dandridge Tennessee kind of late one night like maybe like 10 o'clock it was definitely after dark so I happened to find a spot so I back in there and I'm just sitting there kind of vegging kind of you know like just decompressing a little bit and <clears throat> across from me there's a pretty brand new um, Werner International LT parked there and this this guy comes in and he's you know uh, he's driving some no-name you know <clears throat> rented trailer you know the story right a piece of crap truck but anyway he um, he comes in and he and he's trying to he's just doing a normal like left hand alley dock kind of backing in between in this truck in this parking space and he he doesn't he doesn't crank it around enough 
and he just totally like smashes into the left front fender of this pretty new, pretty shiny Werner International LT. And then he knows he hit the guy because, you know, his truck is like lurches to a stop, right? And he can, you know, he could tell he hit something, right? So what does he do? He doesn't get out and look or anything. He just takes off. Except this guy doesn't go very far. He actually simply does a lap around the truck stop and then like parks down in an area where it's just like kind of a dirt lot. But I already had enough information to like call, you know, I didn't confront the guy, right? I just called Werner and I took some, I walked over to the Werner truck, took some pictures, gave him the trailer number. Um, nobody came out of the Werner truck, so it might've been a guy, you know, at home or whatever. But anyway, and then in the morning, I got up, I was getting ready to get on the road, but this, uh, this dude was still there. So I walked over and took a picture of his DOT number, sent it into Werner. They were very appreciative of it. But so this time, this chucklehead hits Paul and and apparently what, what's really crazy is like there were three spots next to Paul that were open and this guy still managed to hit him, right? And I was like, he wanted to hit, he did that on purpose, man. Like you, get, that's pretty bad, right? And, uh, but the dude took off and, and so Werner says, oh, well, he's out of hours and he's not gonna be able to come back, but we've, we're in contact with him. But he said he didn't know he hit anything. But here's the thing, right? Like the guilty conscience, right? The mens rea, um, or no, not the mens rea, but the guilty conscience. You know, if you're, if you're pulling into a parking spot, you're almost out of hours and you're parking, right? Why would you quit trying to park in a parking spot and then just leave the whole truck stop when not only is the spot that you wanted to get in open, presumably, right why would you back into a spot that's filled and there's a whole bunch of other spots according to Paul and you know of course Paul has this on dash cam so when I by the time I was talking to him the cops had just shown up I hope it, the, at a minimum that Werner fires this guy you know like as soon as he gets the truck back to one of their terminals because um, that was you know that was bullshit anyway the other time that I turned somebody in I turned them into their company. I was at the Loves in Cumberland, Maryland, and I watched this dude in a flatbed with, uh, with a you know, a curtain flatbed, a Conestoga, whatever you want to call it. He pulls in and he freaking shorts a left turn, and he smashes into the back corner of a truck that was at the pumps, the back corner of the trailer. And um, but the irony of this particular hit and run is. He didn't really hurt the other truck, but he tore his own canopy open, his own tarp thingamajig, right? The slider tarp. He tore that open. He put a nice big gash in it from the other dude's trailer. Well, the other dude actually was inside the loves because what happened is, oh boy, then backed up, backed out, then went on the left side of this guy, fueled, and I happened to pull into, because I watched this while I was waiting for a pump. Then I pulled into the pump next to the dude that hit the other guy. But the dude fueled and immediately left, right? So when I went inside, or when I was finished fueling this guy, this other dude was coming out. And I was like, hey, did anybody tell you that your truck got hit? And he's like, no. And I said, okay. And, but I already had all the information. And he looked at his truck, he's like, eh, I'm not really worried about it. But there was a red mark and stuff. You could definitely see that somebody had been up against it. But I called this guy's company and I was like, hey, um, this truck, this trailer just hit a guy and left. And I know for a fact that he did not talk to the other driver because I talked to the other driver. Here's the dude's information. And I'm telling you right now, he's got a rip in that, in that tarp. Um, on the left side about halfway down the trailer. I don't know what they did to the guy. Hopefully they fired him. You know, because here's the irony, right? If he had just gone inside or found, waited for that guy and said, hey man, I, I went up against your trailer. Um, do you have any issue with it? The dude probably would have been like, no, because he didn't have, you know, he didn't, he was like, oh yeah, whatever. 
you know, when I was talking to him. I'm sure if the guy had come clean, he could have, you know, I wouldn't have gotten involved, candidly, because it would have been none of my business at that point. And maybe it wasn't anyway, but it just, this is just something that pisses me off. And he, then he could have just lied to his own company about how the tarp got ripped and how the rail on the side of the flatbed got pushed in. He could have said, I don't know what happened, you know, or I, I was parked, I, you know, and then I did a walk around later and I noticed it. He could have, he could have faked it, right? Um, and you know, hey, there's no victim, so you, you tell whatever story you want about the damage to your truck. But let that be a lesson to everybody, right? Lots and lots of truck drivers have dash cams. And by the way, I had another trainee who got hit and they did they were asleep and they didn't have a dash cam. And unfortunately, Prime took the thousand dollar deductible out of their pocket. So it's, it's a compelling reason to have a dash cam. And I can tell you dash cams do not cost a thousand bucks. Okay. You can get a, <coughs> you can get a fairly reliable web enabled dash cam for a couple hundred bucks. Um, and Paul has one and it saved him, you know, it saved him a thousand bucks. And, uh, that, that dash cam is probably also going to cost a Werner driver his job. Um, and, and I don't care what he says it's not gonna fly. I don't know what the cop's gonna say. Cop might not care, but I guarantee that Werner corporate, no matter what they say to Prime, they're like, oh, he said he didn't. They know that it was a hit and run. They're gonna know that. Doesn't matter what they say, they're gonna know internally. So, you know, it, it, and look, let me say this. I wanna, I just wanna be clear I'm talking, and the hit and runs I'm talking about are when you damage a guy's or gal's truck, right? Their, their tractor. You know, I, I've had people bump into me, and like I had a guy hit, I had a guy hit me in front when I was at a loading dock, and it was a guy that was a company driver for the company I was getting unloaded at, right? It was some food service company up in New England. You know, I was sitting in a truck, he was trying to turn, but it was really tight. And you know, I blame his company for that. And he was doing his best and he, you know, hit my, hit my deer guard actually. And he comes over, I didn't even get out of the truck, right? I didn't get out of the truck and act all indignant, right? Cause I'm, I'm pretty sure he didn't do it on purpose, you know? So I, I was just, I just sat there and then he came over. He's like, hey, do we need to report this? I said, is there any damage? You know, I said, because I've already killed a deer with this thing. I get out. It's like, you couldn't even tell, right? It's like bug splatters, deer, you know, deer fur, what all, all, the, all the crap that hits you on the road. I also even, I also hit, actually in Washington State here, I hit, um, before I even hit my first deer with that freight liner, I hit a, um, a traffic barrel that was just like right in the middle of the only lane that was open. <clears throat> in a construction site. I don't know how it got there. I think somebody clipped it and it kind of like saucered over into the middle. So I, I went right up to it. I mean, I slowed as much as I could, but I had nowhere to go. And I just kind of angled the front of the truck just at the last second to the left. And so it, 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 it just shot it off into the right ditch. And it didn't, I don't even think it scraped the deer guard. But anyway, what I'm talking about are not like, oh, you're in a drop yard and, and you back into, you know, you're backing in, it's nighttime, it's potholes, you know, all that mess, and it's raining, whatever, and you bump into another trailer that's just parked there, right? I'm not talking about that. I mean, I, I know that people do that. They bump into those trailers, you know, it happens, right? I used to jockey, man. I. I freaking hit other trailers every single night. I mean, and I'm guessing most of the guys I worked with did. Um, it was just that tight, it was dark and everything, right? But, you know, as long as you don't tear something up, little scratch here, little scratch there, that's not what I'm talking about, right? I'm talking about when you freaking are backing up and all of a sudden, eh, you know, and you look back there and it's like, oh, there's a freaking 2023 Freightliner direct 
you know, so close that you can't really see the complete truck, you know you did something wrong. Get out, look, you know, and then own up to it, right? And, and hey, if that costs you your job, well, you know, that's just a life lesson. But if you do a hit and run, and, and especially if you get a ticket for it, you're not gonna work in this town again. You know, you're gonna, you really are gonna have trouble getting a job with any reputable company with a, with a commercial vehicle hit and run on your record. So, you know, don't add insult to injury because odds are somebody's gonna see it. I mean, sometimes you can get away with it, but the odds are somebody's gonna see it because dash cams don't go to sleep, you know? And there's always somebody awake at a truck stop or a rest area, you know? Somebody's always up. Some guy got up and he's sitting in his cab just smoking a cigarette. I see that, I pull into a rest area at three o'clock in the morning, some dude sitting next to me smoking, right? In the dark. Just be a man or be a woman and, and you know, own it. If you make a mistake, you know, you mess up, fess up. Um, Cause guys like me, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only guy who feels like it, you know? I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do the right thing and I'm gonna try to help the victim in, in that situation. So anyway, um, talk to you soon. By the way, my dad's birthday is coming up on the 9th and I'm gonna, I, I got a great story, that my dad passed away, but I got a great story to tell you about it, something that I did um, for his birthday and involves my dad, the Marine Corps, a really, really famous author, and um, a friend of mine who was uh, in law school with me. It's got a lot of cool elements, um, and I hope you'll enjoy it, and I'm gonna enjoy retelling it. Oh, and by the way, speaking of D-Day, World War II, uh, I'm going on home time next week, and my wife and I are just gonna go on a little vacay up in the Hudson River Valley. Um, but I talked to her today, I said, hey, I wanna stop at FDR's um, Hyde Park home. So there's the Franklin Delano Roosevelt um, homestead there. There's the Presidential Library. He is buried there. Eleanor Roosevelt is buried there. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna do a little thing like I did at President Garfield's house um, and share a little bit that, of, the, uh, of that with you. So um, maybe you'll look forward to that. Hope you will. And anyway, I will talk to you soon. Bye.